In this video we're going to build a bit on the knowledge that we have developed already so far uh, about what it is that makes things go viral and how things work in a, in a digital space uh, and we're going to look a bit more on digital campaigns and then use that in, in the uh, integrated marketing communications framework. Uh, so a little bit about uh, traditional versus uh, new media uh, and also about uh, about how we build digitally integrated campaigns. Uh, first of all, have a look at this uh, this little video. It's an ad for uh, Adobe, actually, uh, but it's uh, it's it's quite funny. So I recommend uh, download the slides and have a look. Uh, uh, most of you would probably be familiar with uh, this framework. So this is the old communication models from the mid '50s. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, then you should read up a little bit. Uh, so basically the traditional uh, communications uh, model of how communication works is that there's a sender, uh, the sender sends out a message that is then being uh, encoded or decoded through the media and the channel that's being used, uh, such as for example television, uh, and it goes through the channel, so the encoding is the um, function of uh, well actually making that television ad in this example uh, so you take your message and you you communicate it through this media uh, the noise is of course other ads that's on television uh, then that gets decoded by the receiver they see the message and they understand it or they don't understand it uh, but what we get more of these days in a digital space is the red uh, dotted line here the feedback loop uh, which previously was dotted because it's uh, sort of an assumed loop, uh, but these days that goes much more directly through uh, social channels in particular, but also through many other uh, digital channels. Uh, so some of the things that are changing now is uh, from traditional to new media is that you uh, there's going from a a push to a pull uh, situation, and I'm not talking about uh, uh, about that in terms of uh, uh, marketing in a in a in a broad sense, I'm talking about this in terms of uh, in terms of communication. Uh, so uh, there's a shift in power. Consumers uh, decide whether or not they want to opt in, whether or not they want to see your messages. Uh, so your capacity to just sort of spew out messages at at consumers uh, is now limited. As consumers, uh, you need to to pull them towards what it is that you want to say. Uh, and so we're with Web 2.0, we, we're s switching from a monologue to a dialogue. Uh, and also the the concept of here from uh, from one to many uh, to to one to one. Uh, and what, what we mean by that is that uh, traditionally you, you have your th as a center of the message and that goes out, same as it goes out to everyone. Uh, but now, especially in B2B, uh, through social channels, there's more of, of a one-to-one -one communication situation. Uh, and of course, uh, from a consumer, uh, uh, from, a, from a B2C situation, uh, we, we quite often have a many-to-many uh, a -many as well. And that's obviously what we're talking about between consumers as well, where uh, consumers uh, engage and interact on fan pages and, and so forth. Um, all right, let's uh, let's move on to some some statistics to see how things are are changing as well in in uh, in this landscape. Uh, and and you, you can also go and look at the latest uh, census report to get the data from Australia. Uh, and what we see still is that there is, seems to be like an overspending on on traditional uh, sources. Uh, so such as radio, television, magazines, there seems to be like an overspending in these areas uh, because the way the, the media that people are using is more going towards digital medias uh, while, while the spending goes in other areas. Uh, and this sort of uh, uh, also seems to suggest the same things, these, these stats here. But uh, what we also see is uh, the recognition now of uh, of mobile as uh, as as coming in as a, as a very important uh, part of of businesses ad spending. So when they're spending online, uh, the the growth of online spending is is coming in terms of mobile, uh, as we s as I've spoken about in another video, uh, 
uh, mobile is is really has has um, uh, come in very very quickly as being the preferred uh, uh, device that we access the the internet. Uh, if you look at uh, estimated ad spending per per internet users, uh, we can see here that Australia is among the highest in the world. Uh, so so we are actually at at the forefront in Australia in terms of spending money on uh, on on digital. Uh, and yeah, so this is just showing you a little bit about the the growth of the of the digital spend in Australia as well. Uh, but what we need to remember, and also in light of those other stats that I showed you earlier, uh, it is not just a matter of of sort of, of saying that well, you know, it seems that uh, we are wasting our or businesses are wasting their time and money of of using traditional media because the consumers have moved on. Uh, we have to remember that this is a very very short history and that it's like it's only about 20 years old for, since the very beginning uh, so you have a look at this uh, this little little chart here that, that tells you a little bit about the uh, the history of, of online advertising and how quickly these these things are have developed uh, 20 years may for some seem like a long time but in the greater scheme of things and uh, and the history of, of advertising and marketing theory uh, 20 years is really 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 rapid uh, that, that this um, these things have have, uh, have evolved so um, here's a sort of an interesting one from from Coulter and Stark is there in the International Journal of Advertising which is now about about 10 years old uh, and and this paper is sort of it, it looks at um, media selections uh, and the factors that businesses go through when they select what media to uh, to use for their for their messages uh, and the alternatives that they have listed here direct mail internet as one as one box together with ma magazine newspapers outdoor radio television uh, these days we may go uh, and list uh, things such as for example Google Ads Facebook Twitter apps various other types of, of, of digital media and then perhaps lump the other ones together as old media or traditional media or something like that. So things are changing but what's changing is that we're getting more channels uh, to, to use as marketers and the old ones uh, serves their purpose and what matters is of course always what are the needs and the wants of the consumer and how do we reach them through using any of these of these channels? So, if you look at the framework further up here, time for example, uh, lead. So we look at the subfactors of lead time and exposure time. Lead time has to do how long does it take to develop this ad uh, or this this marketing communication uh, material, uh, and for how long will that material be exposed to consumers? Uh, so of course in, in this sense you can say well the lead time to create a television ad may be very long yet the exposure uh, is, is shorter uh, and outdoor uh, billboard for example may have a shorter lead time and also a longer exposure time but then again it may expose less consumers and so forth so the, the, the sub factors and the factors uh, still remains relevant but, but you know the alternatives are more now than what they used to be uh, and we can look at the same with, with time here and, and think about uh, okay well so to create a tweet uh, the lead time is fairly short uh, but then again the exposure is also also very short so uh, so if, if your tweet has not been seen within 20 minutes then it's likely that it never will be seen by anyone pretty much uh, while the lead time to create an app is much longer uh, but if it's a good app then people will play with it for a long time so so these things are uh, framework I think it's still relevant but the outcome has has changed uh, okay so uh, e-marketing integration uh, involves well pretty much the same as uh, as other types of marketing integration uh, and you start by you need to have a clearly identified communication objective so you need to know what am I trying to achieve with this piece of information? Am I trying to get more likes on Facebook, more followers? And if so, uh, how does that translate into the uh, objectives of the organization? I'm trying to get leads and sales, sign-ups of newsletters. What is the objective? And that has to be clearly defined uh, because you don't want to, to waste time and money unnecessarily. Uh, of course, you also need to have 
to consider the full range of, of target of your target audiences. Uh, quite often, you would use various channels uh, in terms of uh, in terms of actually communicating with uh, with with employees rather than with customers. Uh, sponsorships, for example, are quite often done uh, to make employees feel good and proud of working for a for a particular business. Uh, and the same thing obviously matters uh, in terms of in terms of your uh, e-marketing strategies. You really need to think about uh, what is the audience that you are communicating with, and that could be others than just your uh, your customers. And then of course you got to think about how to manage all of this. Uh, you got to think about the the range of of the media or and and your promotional tools. Uh, so you know you use. Uh, uh, the range of of, uh, of of various types of social media, for example, will depend on what your consumers are are using and so forth. Uh, and then at the end, you select the most effective promotional mix in order to get your message out clearly uh, and consistently to whomever it is that you're trying to target. And of course, these days, with the enormous amount of various types of uh, of digital channels, in particular, that we have. Uh, you got to consider some of these uh, C's here, uh, so that you, you know, even though you use different platform, there's got to be some sort of coherence that the different messages uh, are logically connected, and there's also got to be consistency, uh, so that messages are supporting and reinforcing. Uh, you may use one channel to draw attention to another channel, and so forth, uh, and there's got to also be some continuity. Uh, and, and complementary, so that there is synergy and that the sum of all parts uh, will, will lead to a greater whole. So these things are, are, are things that are important to, to consider uh, when you're creating and integrating uh, marketing uh, communications plan, that there actually is a, uh, a thought and a plan and a meaning uh, between the channels that you use and that you don't waste time using channels that, uh, that seems to have no purpose or meaning. Uh, here is a good example of an integrated campaign. This is for Nivea in Brazil, uh, where they use a mixture of, of online and offline channels, uh, magazine ads and, and apps, uh, which is quite cleverly done, so have a look at that. Uh, so this is, uh, this is the, uh, one of the core uh, readings for today, how to create a successful integrated marketing campaign. So let's go through those seven steps. Uh, so the first step there is to have a clear understanding of, of, of who your target audience is. Uh, so this is fairly basic first year marketing. Uh, always, always start with the uh, consumer, with the customer. Uh, basic in my definition of marketing is, as I said <laughs> several times, uh, f finding out what the needs and the wants of the consumer is and then serving those needs and wants. Uh, so you want to know you know, what, what, who are they, what motivates them, uh, how would they like to be communicated to, uh, and, uh, and through which channels, uh, which channels are they using and so forth. So that's always the first step. Uh, and then sort of echoing some of the papers of uh, Kaplan and Hinlin from, from another video, pick your channel and pick the channels that, that consumers are using and consider the, the strength and the weaknesses of, of each channel uh, and also whether or not you're going to use uh, use more than one, and how they will help you to reach the objectives. Uh, of course, you've got to have a consistent look. Uh, of course, <laughs> there's a bit of a joke here with with Steve Jobs, but yeah, no, he he did certainly have a very consistent look. Uh, but but in terms of IMC, uh, integrated marketing communication, a consistent look means that it doesn't sh or it shouldn't matter where consumers are coming in contact with your with your organization or with your brand uh, they should always feel that you know it's they, they should have a like your brand should should give them a particular feeling and that should be consistent across various types of platforms so as much as it is important that your your content is developed uh, on different platforms and that you speak the sort of l language of the platform if you want uh, and and you you do that and you so you which goes into the next step of creating a, a clear and consistent a clear and consistent content that can be adopted and repurposed to suit different media channels so that you when you're on on Facebook versus on Twitter versus on LinkedIn 
you will repurpose some of some of the content, uh, but you need to speak the the language of that channel, uh, which you probably realize that in the, the way that we communicate on Facebook, the way that I communicate with you on Facebook or YouTube or in class or through Canvas may differ slightly, uh, but you still recognize that it's me uh, and the message, I hope, is clear and consistent, uh, but I am at the same time uh, trying to, to speak the, the native language of the platform if you want, so that I'm, I'm adopting and repurposing to suit, uh, to suit the channel, uh, but at the same time being uh, compelling and consistent in what I do. Uh, so uh, you've got to also ensure that, that your message is integrated across, across the platforms that you're using. So here's just an example from my own personal website. So, so if you go on my website, you can see up, up in the, the corner uh, there's there's direct links there to various types of uh, of social media that I use and also my my RMIT website and various types of of research websites such as Google Scholar for example where you can go and and read some of my journal articles if if you so wish uh, and and yeah for those of you that are writing a blog or are doing a brand me and creating a website. Uh, fix up that real estate and make sure that you have links that are actually functional uh, and that lead to your profile. If you don't want to have a link to your personal Facebook site, then remove that, uh, remove that box. Uh, it's also important, especially in large organizations, that your marketing teams and your agency are working in sync. Uh, and then, of course, uh, don't forget to track your campaigns, use your analytics, use the analytic tools. Uh, and make sure that what you're actually designed from the very beginning actually can be measured. Uh, that's also an important thing. All right, I'm going to leave you with that, and uh, we'll continue with the rest in a separate video.